Genius Kids. Cultivating love for learning. Chapter 3 Granny's Fabulous Kitchen. Whenever Granny made vanilla or chocolate fudge, she gave me some to take to Mohan, the gardener's son. It was no use taking him roast duck or curry chicken, because in his house no one ate meat. But Mohan liked sweets, gulab jamun, rasgullas, jalebis which were made with lots of milk and lots of sugar, as well as Granny's homemade English sweets. We would climb into the branches of the jackfruit tree and eat fudge of peppermints or sticky toffee. We could not eat the jackfruit, except when it was cooked as a vegetable or made into a pickle. But the tree itself was wonderful for climbing. And some wonderful creatures lived in it, squirrels and fruit bats and a pair of green parrots. The squirrels were friendly and soon got into the habit of eating from our hands. They too were fond of Granny's chocolate fudge. Word meaning Fudge, a soft sweet made from sugar, butter and milk which often had flavoring added. Pickle, vegetables preserved in mustard oil, vinegar, etc. Creatures, living beings, bats, a mouse-like flying mammal. One young squirrel would even explore my pockets to see if I was keeping anything for him. Mohan and I could climb almost any tree in the garden, and if Granny was looking for us, she would call from veranda and then from the pantry at the side of the house and finally from her bathroom window on the other side of the house. There were trees on all sides, and it was impossible to tell which one we were in, until we answered her call. Sometimes Crazy would give us away, by barking beneath our tree. When there was fruit to be picked, Mohan did the picking. The mangoes and lychees came into season during the summer, when I was away at boarding school, so I could not help with the fruit gathering. The papayas were in season during winter, but you don't climb papayas trees, they are too slender and wobbly. You knock the papayas down with a long pole and catch them before they hit the earth. Mohan also helped Granny with the pickling. She was justly famous for her pickles. Green mangoes pickled in oil were always popular. So it was her hot lime pickle and she was equally good at pickling turnips, carrots, cauliflowers, chilies and other fruits and vegetables. She could pickle almost anything, from nasturtium seed to jackfruit. Uncle Ken did not care for pickles, so I was always urging Granny to make more of them. My own preference was sweet chutneys and sauces, but I ate pickles too, even the very hot ones. One winter, when Granny's funds were low, Mohan and I went from house to house, selling pickles for her. In spite of all the people and pets she fed, Granny wasn't rich. The house had come to her from grandfather, but here wasn't much money in the bank. The mango crop brought in a fair amount every year, and there was a small pension from the railways. Grandfather had been one of the pioneers who would help bring the railway line to Dehra at the turn of the century, but there was no other income. And now that I come to think of it, all those wonderful meals consisted of only one course, followed by a sweet dish. It was Granny's cooking that turned a modest meal into a feast. I wasn't ashamed to sell pickles for Granny. It was great fun. Mohan and I armed ourselves with baskets filled with pickle bottles, then set off to cover houses in our area. Word meaning Explore, to examine carefully, crazy, stupid, wobbly, shaky, nestertium, a garden plant. Major Clark, across the road, was our first customer. He had red hair and bright blue eyes and was almost always good-humored. And what have you got there, Rusty? he asked. Pickles, sir, pickles. Have you been making them? 
No, sir, they're my grandmothers. We're selling them, so we can buy a turkey for Christmas, Mrs. Bones Pickles, eh? Well, I'm glad mine is the first house on your way, because I'm sure that basket will soon be empty. There's no one who can make a pickle like your grandmother, son. I have said it before and I'll say it again, she is God's gift to a world that is terribly short of good cooks. My wife has gone shopping, so I can talk quite freely, you see. What have you got this time? Stuffed chilies, I trust. She knows they are my favorite. I shall be deeply wounded if there are no stuffed chilies in that basket. There were, in fact, three bottles of stuffed red chilies in the basket, and Major Clark took all of them. Our next call was at Miss Kenner's house. Miss Kenner could not eat hot food, so it was no use offering her pickles, but she bought a bottle of preserved ginger. And she gave me a little prayer book. Whenever I went to see her, she gave me a prayer book, and it was always the same. Further down the road, Dr. Dutt, who was in charge of the hospital, bought several bottles of lime pickle, saying it was good for his liver. And Mr. Hari, who owned a garage. At the end of the road and sold all the latest cars, bought two bottles of pickled onions and begged us to bring him another to the following month. By the time we got home, the basket would usually be empty and granny richer by 20 or 30 rupees, enough, in those days, for a turkey. Uncle Ken stayed for Christmas and ate most of the turkey. Word meaning Humor, the ability to perceive, quite, completely, stuffed, filled, several, many. It's high time you found a job, said granny to Uncle Ken one day. There are no jobs in Dehra complained Uncle Ken. How can you tell? You have never looked for one. And anyway, you don't have to stay here forever. Your sister Emily is headmistress of a school in Lucknow. You could go to her, she said before that she was ready to put you in charge of the dormitory. Bah! Said Uncle Ken, honestly, Aunt May, you don't expect me to look after a dormitory C thing with 40 or 50 demented small boys? What's demented? I asked. Shut up, said Uncle Ken. It means crazy, said Granny. So many words mean crazy, I complained, why don't we just say crazy? We have a crazy dog, and now Uncle Ken's crazy too. Uncle Ken clipped me over the ear, and Granny said, Your uncle isn't crazy, so don't be disrespectful. He's just lazy and eccentric, I said. I heard he was eccentric. Who said I was eccentric? Demanded Uncle Ken. Miss Leslie, I lied. I knew Uncle Ken was fond of Miss Leslie, who ran a beauty parlor in Duhra Smart Shopping Center. I don't believe you said Uncle Ken. Anyway, when did you see Miss Leslie? We sold her some mint chutney last week. I told her you liked mint chutney. But she said she would bought it for Mr. Houghton who's taking her to the pictures tomorrow. Ruskin Bond Word meaning Dormitory, a large bedroom with a number of beds in it, demented, behaving in a crazy way, complain, to express feeling of pain, eccentric, unconventional and slightly strange. Like, share and subscribe.